thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending today's program in honor of National Drug Court Month, recognizing two of our wonderful judges, Judge Michelle Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Porth. Before we get started, I ask you please mute yourself throughout this presentation so we don't hear your background noise. And I'd like to hand it over to the Honorable Brenda Foreman, our Clerk of Courts, to lead us through the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, everyone. I'm sure that uh, everyone has a flag around them somewhere. If you don't mind standing, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and now we will turn it over to our chief judge, the Honorable Jack Tudor. Thank you, Judge uh, Navarro, and welcome everybody. Um, special welcome to Judge May, who's joining us uh, today, who's been involved with our drug court since its inception. Um, so I just wanted to uh, thank everybody uh, who is being recognized today for their uh, many efforts uh, in the drug court. I know Judge May is gonna go into far more detail, but I wanted to give you just a little bit of background of our drug court. And I also wanted to uh, tell you the names of the folks that we're recognizing today who've been involved with our drug court uh, beyond our judges that Judge Navarro referred to. Uh, the Broward Drug Court was created in 1991. It's the third oldest and second largest drug court in the nation. It has had more than 13,000 pretrial graduates since 1991. The re-arrest rate uh, for drug court is 20%, which is far less than the national average for re-offense. As of 2000, at the end of 2013, the average age of admission into drug court was 37. The youngest was 18 and the oldest was 62. 85% of the graduates are male, 15% female. 82% of admissions had high school degree or GED degrees, 82%, while college graduates was 3%. So I think that should amplify the meaning of getting a higher degree education to avoid the pitfalls of drug and alcohol abuse. Um, the primary drug of choice as of 2013 by 42% was cocaine, but now it is opioids and I don't have those percentages. Uh, since March of 2020, when the pandemic began and we went to remote operations, there have been 347 people who have successfully completed drug court. And if you calculate that per, per working day, that's almost one person every day uh, since the courts have been closed. That's a remarkable accomplishment. Um, I also wanted to take a minute here to recognize Judge Navarro for volunteering to take over this division after Judge Singer moved on to the civil division. She's done an outstanding job and to thank Braulio and the members of the Broward County Bar and everyone else who helped put this uh, program together today. So in addition to my good friends, Judge Singer and Judge Porth, today, we are providing certificates and recognizing the following folks who are on our current drug team. Uh, Judge Navarro, of course, Judge uh, General Magistrate Rudy Morrell, Drug, drug Court Manager Diane St. Ahmad Scott, uh, Drug Court Case Manager Lucretia Franklin, Drug Court Case Manager Andrea, Andrea, I can't pronounce your last name, C-O-R-I-L-L-O-C-L-L-A, -L 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 uh, Drug Court Manager uh, case manager Jackie Mullins, drug court case manager Reggie Williams, uh, from the public defender's office, Vigel Rowley, uh, and David Hodge, ASA Jamie Potash, and Richard O'Connor. Also, Tabitha Black from the BSO Drug Court Treatment Division, Laura Smith from the BSO Drug Court Division, Veronica Jones, uh, Maggie McGlashan, Christine DeSico, from the Florida Department of Corrections, as well as Tammy Marcus. So on behalf of the 17th Judicial Circuit um, in recognition of drug court this month, we uh, wanna recognize all of these folks. We know the drug is 
the, the judge is generally front and center, but without all of these people in support, uh, the program would never be as successful as it's been. And a final word to my friend, Judge May, as I previously pointed out, she has been a tremendous advocate for the drug court throughout the state, drug courts for funding and other opportunities, even though she's moved on to the fourth district, she has a passion and a love for this court. And that's why she's here today to help us recognize um, uh, these folks. So thank you all very much for coming and thank you, Judge Navarro, once again. Thank you, Chief Judge Tudor. We appreciate you recognizing all of our team and those who assist us every day. Now I'm going to turn it over to our Executive Director, Braulio Rosa, for recognition of our sponsors because without them, this would not be possible. Thank you, Judge Navarro. Uh, yes, our sponsors make it possible. So thank you so much for all your support. Uh, I want to thank FHE Health. We have Dr. Bo Nelson on. Thank you for your support. When I reached out to them, they were like, oh, you know, we love Judge Porth and, and Judge Tobin Singer. So they, they were on it. Eric Schwartzreich and Associates, when I reached out to Eric, he was quick to support it. And David Bogenschutz, thank you so much for your support on these programs. Um, so deserving, and we appreciate it. Uh, Judge Navarro, forgive me for interrupting again, but I neglected to leave out of this uh, Kathy Pugh and our truck court administrators who put these programs together with us, provide statistical information, and support these programs um, throughout the year. So thank you, Kathy, and our staff with the truck court administration. Yes, thank you. And now, uh, greetings from our Broward County Bar Association President, Robert Vaughn. Mr. Vaughn. Thank you, Judge Navarro, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, there is no question that drugs are a scourge on the society. There is no question that addiction has far-reaching implications affecting not only the addicted individual, but the families and the communities that love and support them. Uh, our drug court is a tremendous example of the need and the impact of therapeutic courts and the service that they can provide not only to the individual, but to the community. And I applaud uh, Judge Tudor for making sure that we recognize not only uh, Judges Porth and, judges, and Judge Tobin Singer for the tremendous leadership that they have shown, but Judge May, uh, the, 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 the administrative staff and all of the supporting personnel in the drug court because it does take a village. It's not just the leadership, it's the execution um, at every step along the way. And when you look at the statistics, when you look at the low recidivism rate, when you look at the success of this drug court, it is no wonder that the 17th and our drug court um, is a leader nationwide in this type of program. So on behalf of you know, all of the members of the Broward County Bar Association, we thank you, we congratulate you, and, and we salute you for this recognition today. Congratulations. Thank you, President Vaughn. Braulio and the Broward County Bar Association, thank you again for putting this together and allowing us to honor our, our drug court uh, during National Drug Court Month. It is imperative that we work together with these problem solving courts. Um, and that's why we are here. We're noticing, well, we're recognizing two of our very own and certainly Judge May as well as the trailblazer and problem solving courts and therapeutic courts. Um, the two judges that were here recognizing Judge Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Porth have been instrumental in our drug court program. They are leaders um, and they embody the characteristics of a therapeutic court judge. Um, and certainly I look up to them as mentors. And um, before I get started with introducing them and talking to them, I know Judge Tudor went through um, some of our wonderful statistics, um, but we are also pleased to uh, announce that, like he said, we have um, graduated approximately 300 participants since the courthouse has been closed. Uh, we have been fully operational during the pandemic when I think our community really needed us the most. And I, I cannot 
thank my team enough. It is, it is it, in large part due to their outstanding work. Uh, they worked around the clock to ensure that we were virtually set up and running. And it's a lot of moving parts to get a, uh, a problem solving core up and running virtually um, to provide uh, the therapeutic services and access to the courts that our participants really, really needed. Um, so I do want, I know Judge Tudor did it. I do want to thank my team um, for all of your work, um, my case managers, BSO treatment facility, BARC, probation, pretrial officers, all the treatment providers that worked with us, the public defender's office, the assistant state attorneys, the state attorney's office, um, certainly General Magistrate Morrell, and all the countless others who are involved in our drug court uh, community for your service and for your dedication to our drug court participants and our drug court program. None of this would have been possible without you. And I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart also for embracing me uh, during the transition and allowing me to come on uh, virtually and helping me and guiding me. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So although this has been a very challenging year um, and certainly unprecedented, unprecedented times in our nation's history, our drug court has, like I said, remained fully functioning and helping the most vulnerable of our citizens in our community. Whether it was health, housing, food, or a plethora of other issues our participants were encountering during the pandemic, the drug court team was there providing and continues to provide all participants with essential re resources that they needed to better their recovery and to also be productive members of our society. I am pleased to announce since March of 2021, when we shut down the courthouse, that we graduated approximately 350 participants and nearly 300 participants have virtually opted in to drug court. Throughout the pandemic, virtual court has provided us an opportunity and provided the participants access to the courts that otherwise would have never been possible. We've had the unique ability to meet parents, children, bosses, colleagues, and other support systems to our participants. We've toured homes, businesses, we've met newborn babies, and we've interacted with the participants like never before. And that was all due to virtual court capabilities. Again, I thank our technical support, JIS and our drug court team for making this all possible. Now I'd like to turn it over to Judge Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Porth. Well, I don't wanna turn it over to them, but I would like to acknowledge their service a little bit. Um, I had the opportunity as a former prosecutor and a defense attorney uh, to practice in front of these two remarkable judges. These judges, like I said, embody ideal characteristics of the therapeutic drug court judge. They show patience, kindness, empathy, and a dedicated devotion to helping and serving others in our community. Judge Tobin Singer served on our drug court for approximately combined 10 years, and Judge Ari Porth served our drug court for eight years. I thank you both from the bottom of my heart for serving drug court and making it a priority in our court system and for all the patience and kindness and empathy that you showed our participants and also for being a mentor to me and always picking up the phone when I have questions. So let your service and recognition remind us all here today, whether you are a lawyer, a judge, or a member of our drug court community, be kind, be patient and help and serve your neighbor. It goes a long way, especially during these trying times. So before I do uh, honor these two judges, I would like to recognize uh, the Honorable Melanie May, who is here with us today. And it is an, an absolute honor to have her here with us. Fourth District Court of Appeals Judge Melanie May um, will go through the history of our drug court with you briefly. Um, she is still actively involved and has been and still continues to be our trailblazer in our problem solving courts. Judge May served Broward County Drug Court from 1991 to 2002, 
up until she was appointed to the fourth district court of appeals. Like I said, she's actively involved and continues to be in Florida drug courts. She is the vice chair and past chair of the Florida Association of Drug Court Professionals. She has chaired the Department of Children and Family Services, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Advisory Board and serves on the Florida Supreme Court Steering Committee on Problem Solving Courts. She served on the Florida Supreme Court Task Force on Treatment-Based Drug Courts and as the Florida Supreme Court's appointment to the Advisory Council of the Florida Office of Drug Control. She was a member of the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Cooperation. She also served on the Mental Health Subcommittee of the Florida Supreme Court's Committee on Children and Families, the Judicial Ethics Advisory Committee, and Access to Courts Records Committee. Judge May, I thank you for all that you do for our problem-solving courts and for all you have done for Broward County's Drug Court. And I turn it over to you now. Thank you, Judge Navarro, and thank you, Chief Judge Tudor and Braulio and Mr. Vaughn for your kind remarks earlier today. It's my pleasure and honor to be here with you today, and it's always very special for me to be with Broward County's Drug Court. I cherish the years I served in this division. It simply was the most rewarding work I've ever done since taking the bench. I remember when I learned I had been appointed to the Fourth District Court of Appeal, I was so excited but I was also very sad to leave drug court. And I see there are some of the people that I work with that are here today. So I, I um, tribute to you um, for your continuing work that's so very important to the people that you serve. So um, let's start from the beginning, 1989, Miami-Dade County. The chief judge there permitted one of the criminal trial judges, Judge Herbert Klein, to take a one-year sabbatical to study the revolving door of offenders charged with drug possession, then most notably crack cocaine. The criminal court was overrun with repeat offenders and there seemed to be no end in sight. Judge Klein came back after his year and recommended a treatment court where substance abusers received monitored treatment and the potential for the dismissal of their charges. In short, drug court was born. Not long after, Judge Robert Fogan from our circuit was inspired and motivated to bring drug court to Broward County. Many of the judges, now I would say most of us, had no idea what it involved, but he was so enthusiastic. You would see his bailiffs bringing dozens of Dunkin' Donuts into his courtroom every morning, but no one really knew what was going on in there. And yes, it was Judge Fogan's vision that really created the Broward County Drug Court. Then in 1994, I was Christmas shopping at the Galleria Mall and ran into Judge Mark Spicer, the administrative judge of criminal. After holiday greetings, he asked, how would you like to go to drug court? And my response is, you're kidding, right? Um, I didn't think another thing about it. But a few days later, my bailiff told me that there was a rumor that we were being transferred to drug court. Now, if you know anything, you know that bailiffs know everything about what's going on in the courthouse. And sure enough, a couple of days later, Chief Judge Dale Ross and uh, Court Administrator Carol Ortman paid me a visit and asked me to take over the drug court. But I wanted to see for myself if this really worked. So I immediately began keeping statistics. And much to my surprise and amazement, Judge Klein's invention worked. Success was not just an illusion, it was a reality and the opportunity to watch each miracle of recovery was a gift. And when it was time for me to leave, I felt I was abandoning a child. I had to find just the right person to take my place. And Judge Marsha Beach was that person. Her unlimited capacity to care and nurture was the perfect fit for Broward's drug court. Then time came for another change in leadership. Both Judge Beach and I spoke frequently, who could do it? The answer was clear. Judge Michelle Tobin Singer. I had not known her before, but Judge Beach assured me she was the one and she was right. At one of the last graduations held by Judge Beach, we listened to Judge Tobin Singer speak. Judge Beach and I looked at each other and we watched this young energetic judge and knew that she was the perfect for this job. She brought her own personality, energy, and enthusiasm to the assignment. And you see, drug courts had evolved over the last two decades. Science actually taught us that it was the person with a high risk of relapse 
and high need for treatment that we needed to target. And it was Judge Tobin Singer that brought Broward County's drug court into this new decade, relying on evidence-based research, best practice guidelines, and sheer determination, she once again made Broward County's drug court a showcase for the country. I then had the opportunity to get to know her better as a member of the Supreme Court's steering committee on problem-solving courts. We traveled together to numerous meetings. I watched in awe as she brought her groundbreaking experience and creative ideas to bear on the entire Florida drug court system. Judge Tobin Singer is a person I admire for her hard work, dedication, inspiration, and creativity. I am proud to call her a friend. She is so deserving of this recognition today. Congratulations, Judge Tobin Singer. And Judge Ari Porth, another superhuman judge. Um, he, he, we first met when he was a prosecutor in my juvenile delinquency division. Yes, I am about 100 years old, like Methuselah. <laughs> um, he would then become a superstar state representative um, and then a circuit court judge. And guess what? He eagerly accepted the assignment to both mental health and drug court. He was a legislative champion and could now translate his dedication to our community and the bench. I could not be prouder of him for what he has accomplished and will continue to accomplish. He has that unique combination of intellect, empathy, and compassion. Broward County is so fortunate to have him on the bench, and he is also so deserving of being honored today. Congratulations, Judge Porth. And so the tradition continues. As Judge Tobin Singer transitioned to the civil division, she too wanted to leave the drug court in good hands, and she has. Your current drug court judge, Judge Tarlika Navarro, continues the tradition of caring, compassionate judges who have served this court. She brings new enthusiasm, new ideas, new creativity, and has done so during this pandemic. I marvel at her ability to tackle this task and to do so with such integrity. Congratulations, Judge Navarro. Keep up the good work. Thank you, I appreciate it. The pandemic has all taught us something. Uh, Judge Navarro has learned the benefits of remote access, has come up with her own unique way of working with participants, and has the incredible enthusiasm to ensure that Broward's drug court will remain a model for the country. Chief Judge Tudor, you are indeed blessed with judges who surpass expectations, who deliver justice, improve the outcomes of drug court participants, and enhance our community. Happy Drug Court Month, everyone, and congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Judge May. We really appreciate you and we appreciate your service to our community. Now we're going to turn it over to Braulio for a moment to watch a video in honor of Judge Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Port. Okay, just give me a moment. I'm down to one screen. Uh, it's a little bit longer than I thought. It's eight minutes, but such good stuff was said that it was hard to pick. Like, where do you cut? So I hope you enjoy it. What is going on? Why is this showing this share? Why is this not allowing me to share? Wait, let's see. Share screen. Share sound. Good morning, everyone. I am Bradley Rosa, Executive Director of the Broward County Bar Association. It's my honor and privilege today uh, to be interviewing General Magistrate Rudy Morale of the 17th Judicial Circuit. We're gonna be talking a little bit about drug court. Uh, we are honoring and recognizing the folks at drug court, Judge Ari Porth and Judge Michelle Tobin Singer. Welcome General Magistrate Morale. Thank you. Good to be here, Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Why do you think it's important for the 17th Judicial Circuit to have a drug court program? Drug courts improve the community. Um, they do that by helping or enabling uh, offenders to achieve sobriety. But drug courts aren't limited to just that. They also, as treatment courts, as problem solving courts, also offer housing to individuals who need that. 
Um, they uh, offer provider services in mental health, medical. Um, they offer specialized uh, treatment programs uh, like uh, anger management, uh, trauma-related services. Uh, they are truly, um, you know, holistic in their approach to improving lives of the offenders and in so doing, improve the communities. Uh, before the uh, interview, we were actually talking and a uh, great story you told me about a little bit. Uh, so why don't you elaborate that? Can you, can you talk a little bit about uh, your fondest memory of appearing before Judge Michelle Tobin Singer? Yes, it was the last time that I had to go before her prior to my graduation. And she came down off of the bench and she gave me a hug and my daughter a hug. And that was very special because when I first stepped into her courtroom, I was pregnant with my daughter. So she saved both of our lives. Talking about temperament, elaborate, talk a little bit more about him. I know Judge Porth, uh, he's just a wonderful human being. So I know how pleasant and kind he is, but you've known him longer, talk, talk a little bit about it. You know, I, everything from, you know, I, I built a relationship with Ari about a decade ago. Uh, judge Porth, I apologize. I got to we'll, we'll keep it formal for the purpose of celebrating uh, the, the judge. But for even before he was in the role as a judge, he is when he was in the state legislator, when he was a state attorney, he has focused his entire career on helping people, helping legislation to help our kids, helping in the drug court system to help our struggling members of our community. So this is a role that's not foreign to him. It's actually very fitting for him. Uh, I couldn't him, imagine him in any other role, but for, you know, I, I, I like to call it sometimes, it's probably a bad moniker, but he's a, a social worker type of judge. He's a judge that will go out of his way to make a connection, to find a connection, to help somebody. And he has built his entire career doing that. So it, 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 on a temperament front, it takes a special kind of person to do that, to acknowledge that there's obstacles and there's struggles and to be willing to continue to work with somebody to help them succeed. Before we were, we were on uh, live here, we were talking and you had mentioned that you had appeared in front of both Judge Porth and Judge Tobin Singer. And so can you tell me a little bit about one of your best memories uh, of appearing in front of both of them? Both examples, please. Absolutely, Judge Tobin Singer and Judge Porth are two of the very best judges in our entire court system. Uh, we have great judges, of course, uh, but those two individuals, in my opinion, were called to be in drug court. They are just perfect for that position because of their empathy, their compassion, how much they care. I remember being in Judge Tobin Singer's courtroom and walking in, and there were a whole bunch of students that came in for a field trip. And the judge contacted me and said, please come, please join us. And she explained to these young people with such love about what we do in drug court and how we try to help people because addiction is a disease and it needs to be treated differently than a, you know, a different type of a criminal charge. So my memory with Judge Michelle Tobin Singer is how the children loved her and the smile that she had on her face to educate them. It was really a beautiful thing. And then once I was even blessed to bring my two children in to her courtroom and we took a beautiful picture together. I think she's just an amazing judge. And with Judge Ari Porth, I have many beautiful memories as well. Uh, whenever I'd be a little down and I would walk into his courtroom, his beautiful smile would uplift me. He's got such a way about him. He makes you feel good. I just love Judge Ari Porth. He's the perfect person for that position. He's a great listener. He's really concerned about people's well-being. And my unique memory, uh, there's so many, but one that comes to mind is whenever I stood in front of his courtroom to advocate for one of our clients at the James Club, he would always offer me and many a cup of coffee. 
And I thought that was so beautiful. So I remember his generosity, his, his, his compassion, and uh, he's just an amazing judge in drug court. I am today. So talking about second chances and uh, assistance, uh, talk about one of your fondest memories or, or good memory of appearing in front of Judge Tobin Singer. Um, one of my best times appearing in front of her was when I had had a year clean and I got to present her and show her my year coin. Um, and just the pride in her face you know, and the feeling that I got from her that she really legitimately cared. Like she wasn't just sitting up there saying, oh, good for you. Like she really was, she was so happy for me because she has seen my transition from, you know, the broken girl who came in to the girl who's standing up there with confidence. Well, talking about, uh, you know, support, love and all of that, can you can you describe a little bit one of your fondest memories of appearing before Judge Porth? One of my fondest memories of appearing before Judge Porth actually has a little bit of a sad note to it. Um, I was representing a client, uh, his name was Justin, and he was doing pretty well in drug court. And unfortunately, uh, Justin's addiction got the best of him and he passed away from an overdose. But Justin's mom was extremely involved in his life and his attempts at recovery. And Justin's mother would come to court every time. And on the time that she came to inform us that Justin had passed away, Judge Porth allowed her to address the entire drug court audience that was there uh, that day for court. And it was so kind of him to allow her to speak to everybody. And her words had such a huge, huge impact on the people in drug court that day that people came up to me afterwards and wanted to talk to her more. They wanted her phone number. And it was truly because of Judge Porth's kindness that he allowed her to do this. And it was therapeutic for her. It was therapeutic for everybody there. And it just showed to me the absolute incredible person that Judge Porth is. Thank you, Braulio. Is that the end? Yes. Wow, that was absolutely incredible. I appreciate you putting that together. We all appreciate you putting that together. I'm sure it took a lot from the Broward County Bar Association and everyone involved um, and those who were interviewed. Thank you for your time and for that beautiful tribute to uh, Judge uh, Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Porth. Clearly, you both have touched many, many lives. And again, we thank you. So without further ado, I'd like to recognize Judge Tobin Singer for her outstanding service to the 17th Judicial Circuit. Judge Tobin Singer presided over felony drug court from 2006 to 2008, and then again from 2012 to 2020. She is still actively involved in program solving or problem solving courts. She is a board member at and an executive member of the Florida Association of Drug Court Professionals, and she serves on the Florida Supreme Court Task Force for Substance Abuse and Mental Health Issues in the Courts from 2016 to 2018. She sits on the Steering Committee on Problem Solving Courts, appointed by Chief Justice Kennedy, and is the past member of the Statewide Drug Policy Advisory Council. Judge Tobin Singer, most importantly, and I thank you, you are a dear mentor of mine, um, and it is an absolute honor to be able to present you with this award. And I thank you again for coming to me and for seeing in me what uh, that I would be a drug court judge. And I absolutely love every single day that I am able to help people. And you told me that would be the case and you were 100% right. So at this time, um, Braulio, would you like to present her with the award? from the Broward County Bar Association and the 17th Judicial Circuit. Right, so on behalf of our president, executive committee, <clears throat> and our board of directors, and all the members of the Broward County Bar Association, uh, we have uh, an award for both you and, and Judge Porth. Let me share, because we're gonna obviously mail it to the courthouse, considering the conditions that we're all remote right now, but let me share this. One second. So these are the awards that we will be uh, sending to Judge Tobin Singer and George, 
our report and it reads in recognition and gratitude for your hard work, dedication and playing an integral role in making Broward County's drug court a success. 2021 National Drug Court Month celebrating Broward County's drug court success. And this will be given to both Judge Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Porth. So well deserved and thank you very much. Thank you, Braulio. We really appreciate you and the Broward County Bar Association for doing that for Judge Tobin Singer and Judge Ari Porth. Now, Judge Tobin Singer, would you like to say a few words? Sure, I'm, I'm almost speechless. I mean, just the wonderful things that everybody said. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone for coming today and showing your support for drug court. Uh, I have to thank my family for being here, my mom, my children, I'm gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. My brothers, my nephew, thank you for being here. Thank you, Dean Dykus for being here. Um, again, you're showing your support for drug court and drug court to me is the best court. Um, whatever, I've been in a lot of divisions, but I'll never get the gratification that I got from drug court. So it was an honor to be able to preside there. As President Vaughn recognized, it takes a village to have a successful drug court. So I'm gonna spend my speech basically thanking everybody. Um, thank you, Judge Tudor, for appreciating the value of drug court and for your constant support. Judge Tarlika Navarro, thank you for volunteering to take over drug court and doing such a wonderful job. I felt good and feel good leaving drug court in your capable hands. And I know you're gonna to continue to make drug court uh, and improve it. Thank you also for working with Braulio Rosa and Lauren Capote Reigler to put together this event. Braulio, we are so fortunate to have you. You put on wonderful events every week and are always there to support the judiciary and the Broward Bar. Thank you to the clerk's office and Brenda Foreman for allowing us to use the jury room for drug court graduations, which will hopefully resume soon. Uh, Judge Navarro, we, have, we were supposed to have our 100th drug court graduation last May, but because of the pandemic, it was postponed. So I look forward to attending the 100th drug court graduation. What a wonderful thing. Thank you to all the judges and, and um, lawyers and drug court participants who are here today and everybody else. Um, I had great role models when I took over drug court. Judge Fogan, who showed unlimited patience. Judge Beach, who never gave up on anyone. And of course, Judge May, who I am still lucky enough to be able to learn from. Judge May, thank you so much for your kind words about me and Judge Porth. You know I'm the president of your fan club, so your compliments mean the world to me. While being a judge on the 4th DCA, Judge May has remained a vital part, not only of the Broward Drug Court, but of all Florida drug courts. I have been fortunate to be on a committee led by Judge May that created the Florida Best Practices for Drug Courts. And under Judge May's leadership, we are working on a certification process for drug courts and other therapeutic courts. I also want to recognize our misdemeanor drug court started by Giselle Pollack. She, Judge Zeller, and now Judge Gottlieb have helped hundreds of people not only get their cases dismissed, but realize that marijuana, like many other drugs, can be abused and have a negative effect on people's lives. We also should show our appreciation to General Magistrate Debbie McCloskey and Phil Schlissel, who presided in drug court for many years. Debbie McCloskey is still helping people with substance use disorders. And a special uh, remarks about Rudy Morrell, who um, I miss working with you, Rudy, so much, but we still talk all the time. and. Um, we, were so, we are so fortunate in Broward County that we had Rudy Morrell first as a public defender and more recently as general magistrate over drug court. General Magistrate Morrell brings a wealth of knowledge to drug court because not only is he a lawyer, but he's a medical doctor. And more importantly, he brings a commitment, a commitment to helping participants, which he shows by his empathy and compassion, as well as by following best practices. Thank you. General Magistrate Morrell. And of course, our drug court could not succeed without the rest of our village. I would like to recognize everyone by name, but then we would be here for several hours. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna name some people, but if I left out your name, I apologize. Uh, the services we have in Broward County are unsurpassed by any other county in Florida. I hope 
that you know how lucky we are because there are plenty of other drug courts in Florida that would love to have the services that we have. Thank you to the Broward County Commission for funding so many of these services. Thank you to BSO Drug Treatment. First of all, thank you Judge May because she got BSO to, to offer drug treatment. And so we've been able to help so many people through an excellent program. Thank you to Jean Ansurian, Dave Scharf, Dwight Stevens, Patricia Prieto, Ann Thomas, Carmen Jones, Abby Hand, Tabitha Blackman. You all care. And that's why you're in this field. Um, it's a thankless job most of the time. And, and I want you to know that I appreciate you. And so do the drug court participants. And so does the rest of the team. Uh, Bark, House of Hope, Nina Ross, you can't say House of Hope without thinking about Nina Ross. South Florida Therapeutic Solutions, and of course, James Club, Ray and Tracy Rapaglia. Ray, thank you for your kind words. You've done amazing things with the James Club. There's also Fellowship Living, which is another excellent uh, sober living facility. Thank you to the Public Defender's Office. Special thanks to Jean Rowley. The State Attorney's Office, special thanks to Jamie Potash. Our probation officers, the head of them, Tammy Marcus, PTI officers, shout out to Miss Veronica and Miss Maggie, um, the case managers, the drug court coordinator, the courtroom clerk, Tanya, who was, she wanted to stay in drug court forever, but the clerk's office wouldn't let her. And Judith, you were so helpful to me when I was in drug court. Um, I still think you should be a case manager, and I hope that someday you are, and maybe even the drug court coordinator. Um, my bailiff, Sharon. Uh, my judicial assistants, Marie Stewart and Amanda Bates. All of you have worked together as a team to ensure the success of our drug court. The attorneys, the defense attorneys, um, David Bogenschutz, Larry Davis, Eric Schwartzreich, Kenny Hassett, Shauna Korda, Louis Reinstein, Josh Rydell, Andy Coffey. It takes a special type of defense lawyer who represents clients in drug court. From a purely business perspective, Drug court cases are terrible cases. They take a lot of time. The worse your client does, the more hearings you have to attend. To represent clients in drug court, you have to be the type of lawyer who finds drug court rewarding, not financially, but rewarding because you see how it changes your clients' lives, and that matters to you. We are very lucky to have such wonderful defense lawyers in Broward County. I also greatly appreciate the years that Judge Porth handled drug court cases. Because of his help and again, the support of the Chief Judge Weinstein and Judge Tudor, Public Defender and State Attorney's Office, probation, PTI and treatment, we were able to have so many more people participate in drug court. Judge Porth, as Ray was saying earlier, you emanate a feeling of calmness. It's very soothing. You have the gift of being a good listener and showing empathy, all vital elements for a therapeutic court judge. Thank you. Thank you also to Judge Siegel, the administrative judge of um, criminal, Joseph D'Amico and Kathy Pugh. You helped me navigate through some difficult obstacles to make sure our drug court was following best practices. You heard Judge Tudor tell us about the powerful statistics showing the positive impact our drug court has had on reducing recidivism and improving people's lives. It's not just those statistics that make drug court so meaningful to me. Um, being able to see Dana and Erica today, I you know, was crying basically. Um, it's so wonderful to see you both and that you're doing so well. Um, Erica and I are on Facebook together, so I get to watch how you know, wonderful you're doing. And Dana, say, say hi to your dad. And uh, I, I can't even imagine how old your kid is now, <laughs> but I'm so glad that you're doing well. Um, just last week, I received a Facebook message from a former client who was in drug court in 2019, Mike, and he just wanted me to know how well he was doing and, and to thank me for giving him a chance. And then someone on Zoom today at this event sent me a private chat message telling me they have five years clean as of this past, past February, and they were thanking me for helping them. So it's moments like those that make me so thankful that I had the opportunity to serve as a drug court judge for so many years. I'm so proud of all the drug court participants. And um, again, I'm so thankful that I was able to work with such a great team and to, to, to be able to be that, that judge there. And uh, thank you again, Judge Tarlika, Navarro, and Braulio, and, and Judge May for, for putting on this event. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. We all 
appreciate you. Now turning to Judge Ari Porth. Judge Ari Porth presided over the 17th Judicial Circuit's Drug Court from 2013 to 2021. And he currently is now sitting as the mental health court judge in the 17th Judicial Circuit. As you all know, he tirelessly serves this community and the mental health court uh, every day. He is compassionate, he is kind, he is patient, and he always has a smile on his face. He has been recognized for his efforts for many organizations, including the TJ Reddick Bar Association, Broward County Bar Association, the Broward County PTA, the Florida School Social Work Association, the Broward Firefighters, the Broward Partnership for the Homeless, the Smith Community Mental Health Foundation, and the Florida Council on Crime and Delinquency. Judge Ari Porth, I thank you again for your service, and it is my honor, and uh, along with the 17th Judicial Circuit, Judge Chief Judge Tudor and the Broward County Bar Association uh, to uh, present you with this award. And now uh, you may go ahead, ahead with your remarks. Thank you so much. To Mr. Rydell and Mr. Coffey, it is an honor and pleasure to work with attorneys of your caliber who are not only zealous advocates for their clients, but who with real empathy and compassion understand the struggles of the human experience and do their best daily to help their clients overcome obstacles and thrive. To Judge May Broward's treasure and a luminary in the drug court movement, we are forever grateful for your foresight and leadership. Judge May has made it her life's work to advance the role of treatment courts. And I've been honored to have her as a personal mentor over the last 26 years. I got my feet wet in her division as a certified legal intern. She swore me into the bar and to the bench and she continues to inspire me with her forward thinking and life-changing work. To Judge Navarro and Browley Arosa at our amazing bar association, Sincere thank yous for hosting today's recognition. Much appreciation for your skillful planning and highlighting the importance of treatment courts. To our chief judge, Jack Tudor, thank you for allowing me to serve in the therapeutic courts. There isn't a day on the bench I don't look forward to serving, knowing that every case called is an opportunity to help someone new. To my colleague, Judge Tobin Singer, Congratulations on a job well done. You left an indelible mark with your fastidious approach, your adherence to best practice standards, and always holding clients accountable for their actions. To the counselors at the treatment programs, the true champions in the trenches, you are saving lives and reuniting families, and your efforts are never thanked enough. To my immediate team in 7810, Deputy Gloria, Clerk Ritchie, and Judicial Assistant Makila, a better, harder working dream team no one could ask for. Today's recognition is for the success of drug court. It's not about Michelle or me. It's about the collective team approach of a court that has its roots in South Florida and has grown with nearly 4,000 treatment courts across our nation. That growth is credited in changing lives, saving families, saving dollars, and creating safer communities. It is all of us on this screen together, the counselors, the treatment agencies, the peer specialists, the law enforcement officers, the drug court staff, the pretrial officers, the state attorneys and defense attorneys, the families, and of course the clients, working in concert to reach the wanted result, support in recovery and a path toward sobriety. If you know someone who is in need of help because of a substance use disorder or an untreated mental health condition, please feel free to use me as a resource. If I don't have a suggestion for where to go for help, I will direct you to someone who does. No one should suffer silently. There is help out there. And to my family in California and Michigan, thank you for joining. It's a blessing to have them here today and a benefit of Zoom. And Judge Navarro, thank you again for this kind recognition. Thank you, Judge Porth. 
perfect timing to both of you. You are uh, absolutely amazing. And I cannot recognize you and thank you enough for all of your efforts and um, your service to drug court. In closing, I think we've we've thanked everyone. I don't want to take up time and rename all of our team, um, but I do want to re reiterate none of this would be possible without the leadership of Judge Melanie May and Judge Ari Porth and Judge Tobin Singer. And thank you for enabling me and allowing me to follow in your footsteps. Um, case management, thank you for working over hours and tirelessly around the clock for um, virtually making this all possible, um, for reaching out to our participants and being a helping hand when no one else was there during this pandemic. Um, I thank the Broward County Bar Association, obviously, for putting this on with the 17th Judicial Circuit. And uh, again, Judge Melanie May for taking the time to be here with us here today. And um, as we close, I would just like to leave you with a quote that I found to be um, important and in, 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 in leading on this topic, which would be the greatness of a community is most accurate, accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. And it is, is those these two judges that, um, display and uh, embody compassion for our community. And I know that you, if you have presented or worked with them, that you all understand their compassion and their love to serve this community. And um, we can't recognize you enough and we thank you.